Hi again, first graders. You get to see me twice today. Isn't that so exciting? All right, so we are going to finish our writing today. That is your only other assignment after doing your vocabulary and your weekly reading. So you have today to do this and tomorrow morning and afternoon because it needs to be turned in tomorrow, Friday, June 5th, okay? So last writing video you saw me, we organized our writing using the story map that you see right there, okay? So we planned out our characters. We planned out our setting. That means where our story takes place. We created a problem and now we have a solution. So you have all of these things that make a story a story, right? And a make-believe one, so it's going to be really fun. So we've already done our first step of our writing, which is think, okay? We've thought about who is going to be in our story, where our story is going to be, what the problem is, and how we're going to solve it, right? Now, you're going to take all of that information that you filled out in your books, and we are going to put it into a paragraph. And remember, this story isn't going to be an extremely long story. This is only going to be about five to six sentences long, maybe a little longer if you want it to be, depending on how much detail. And you know how Mrs. Cheslock loves detail. So, we are going to take that story planning, our story map, and we're going to turn it into a paragraph today. So, if you remember, I chose my characters were Jeffrey the Giraffe and Leo the Lion. My setting was the movie theater. My problem was the audience can't see the screen because Jeffrey was too tall. And my solution was the animals asked Jeffrey to sit in the back to watch and buy him all the popcorn he wants. So now I have to decide what's going to happen first, next, last, and finally. Because good writers organize their writing. If I just say all of these things happen over and over again, it's not going to be an organized piece of writing. So, we're going to take what we want to happen first. What do you want to happen first in your story? I am going to organize my writing by introducing my characters first, then introducing our setting, my problem, and ending with my solution. So, as you watch me write my story, then you are going to be released to do your story, okay? So let's go over Mrs. Cheslock's story and you can help me create my piece of writing. All right, so we have Jeffrey the Giraffe and Leah the Lion. So maybe I'm going to talk about how they get to the movie theater. So I'm going to write that. Jeffrey the Giraffe and I have to capitalize their names, don't forget. Leo, the lion, are going to the movies. Okay, so I thought about what I was going to write before I write it, wrote it, and now I wrote it. Jeffrey the giraffe and Leo the lion are going to the movies. Do I have finger spaces? Do I have an ending mark? Do I have capital? I sure do. So I have all the things that I need. We read our sentence before we move on. Jeffrey the giraffe and Leo the lion are going to the movies. Makes sense. Cool. I got both my characters introduced. Now what's going to happen? Hmm. I want some detail. Maybe I can say that they went to sit down in their seats. What kind of sentence can I say here? Jeffrey and Leo sat down in their seats. Well, I'm going to get some more details. So maybe they're comfy seats. Yeah. Jeffrey and Leo sit down in their comfy theater chairs. Okay, 
again. So I wrote my next sentence. Capital period finger space. Jeffrey and Leo sit down in their comfy theater chairs. And I have a little bit of detail about how their theater chairs felt to them. Nice. Now what is going to happen? Now I should probably introduce my problem, right? And my problem, remember, as I can go back here in my story map, was that the audience couldn't see the rest of the audience because Jeffrey was a giraffe and he was way too tall. So how can I write that as a sentence? I've got to think about it before I write. If I don't think about my sentence before I write, it will probably be kind of messy. So maybe I can use a time word. Let's read again what I have so far. Jeffrey the giraffe and Leo the lion are going to the movies. Jeffrey and Leo sit down in their comfy theater chairs. Let's see. How would I say after that, some of the other animals in the theater start yelling. Is that good? Okay. Time word after that. After that, the other animals in the theater start yelling. I'm going to use an exclamation point. They're probably upset, right? After that, the other animals in the theater start yelling. Oh my gosh. What can I say happened after that? What do I want to say? What happened in my make-believe story? Maybe I can use some quotations to have them say something. Remember those two little marks? I'm going to use that. We can't see. And that's all that this character said. So I'm going to open my quotation marks and then close them. We can't see. And who do I want to say said that? Said, how about a baby zebra? A baby zebra. We can't see, said a baby zebra. That's funny. So what do I want to happen next? How about we can respond with how Jeffrey felt? How do you think Jeffrey felt? If he's a nice giraffe, do you think he felt like he wanted to block people's way? This is my story, and I think Jeffrey's really nice. So I'm going to say, Jeffrey felt terrible. So he decided to move. So he and Leo moved to the back of the theater. Theater. I need to stretch it out. Eater. Theater. That's a tough word. Just try your best. Stretch it out. Get all those sounds, okay? All right, so I'm going to stop for a minute, and I want to read what I have so far, because I need to make sure it makes sense. Jeffrey the giraffe and Leo the lion are going to the movies. Jeffrey and Leo sit down in the comfy theater chairs. After that, the other animals in the theater start yelling. We can't see, said a baby zebra. Jeffrey felt terrible, so he and Leo moved to the back of the theater. I think maybe I'm going to write something about how else Jeffrey feels. Maybe he was embarrassed because he's tall. Sometimes when you're different, it's not bad, but it might make you feel not so great if people aren't treating you right, right? So I'm going to say, Jeffrey felt embarrassed. Now, I've included detail. How my characters felt a couple dialogues, a couple things that people said. Now I have my solution. My solution that I wrote out was the animals asked him to sit in the back, but they didn't do it very nice, did they? 
but then they buy him all the popcorn he wants. So now I have to turn that into a sentence. So what, how can I put that? Hmm. So Jeffrey felt embarrassed. What happened next? Finally, I'm going to write finally because this is the end of my story. Finally, the animals bought Jeffrey a huge, let me make sure it's big, box of popcorn for moving. Can I include how the popcorn tastes? It was delicious. It was delish, delish, us. delicious. I'm going to stretch it out a little bit. It was delicious. And should we write how Jeffrey felt after that? And Jeffrey felt better. Good. How should we end our story? Did they enjoy the movie? I like that too. It was delicious and Jeffrey felt better. All the animals enjoyed the show. Okay, now I need to reread and make sure it all makes sense and see if there's anything I need to fix. Maybe a spelling error, maybe I forgot a period, right? So let's check it out. Jeffrey the giraffe and Leo the lion are going to the movies. I think I forgot a period after. That's the end of my thought. I gotta put that. Make it darker. Jeffrey and Leo sit down in their comfy theater chairs. After that, the other animals in the theater start yelling. We can't see! And I see I use my quotations and I like that I open and close them so they're good. Said a baby zebra. Jeffrey felt terrible, so he and Leo moved to the back of the theater. Jeffrey felt embarrassed. Finally, I don't know if I, did I capitalize F? That's my new sentence, so I have to capitalize it. I made a mistake. That's okay. I fixed it. Finally, the animals brought Jeffrey a huge box of popcorn for moving. It was delicious, and Jeffrey felt better. All of the animals enjoyed the show. I am happy with my piece of writing. Now it is your turn. Okay? I'm once again going to read you the example that we had the other day of what makes this piece of writing a good one. Okay? Here's all the things that your writing can include. Every story has characters. The char characters can be people or animals. They can be real or make-believe. In this story, they're make-believe. But maybe they're also real. I don't know. It's your story. Everything characters say, characters say to each other in the story is dialogue. That means how they're talking. So when my baby zebra talked to Jeffrey, that was dialogue. Dialogue can show us how they feel, how our characters feel. When you write di dialogue, you use quotation marks. When they start and when they stop. Okay? That shows us exactly what they're saying. Very good. So... You are going to have all of these things. Mrs. Sherbell and I cannot wait to read your writing because these are pretty fun, aren't they? And don't forget, you can give your story a title at the top. I think I want my title to be, how about, Too Tall for the Theater. And I write it nice and big across the top. Okay? Too tall for the theater. I cannot wait to read your writing, boys and girls. Make sure you have some lined paper. All right? If you don't have some, you can grab some from your local store or borrow some. Or you can head up to the school tomorrow. Just make sure that it's open. There is some on in our classroom that I've left out. Okay? So, great job. 
I can't wait to read your writing. I love make-believe writing. It's going to be so fun to read. Make sure that handwriting is beautiful, almost second graders. Okay? Can't wait to read it. I will talk to you soon.